you consulting with consistently so that you're ready on day one? I'm speaking with myself, number one, because I have a very good brain and I've said a lot of things. In fact, in yeah, my exactly. Two lines here. Uh, uh, two lines. We're, well, I'm writing these down. I kind of look like Rachel here. Like I'm writing down studiously here. One, I'm speaking with myself. Yep. That's, that's obviously cause for concern. Silent reflection. And two, of course, yeah. Willie, something that you say all the time. Every time we were watching Bob Costa's show, I go, Willie, how did you know he was going to say that? What do you say? I got a good brain, man. I got a good brain. I, I got a very good brain. Very, I have a very one good of the best brain. Brains. Do you think yeah. so? You have one of the best Thanks brains. You have really right seriously yeah, one of the yeah. best brains. So that was President yeah. Trump speaking with us on Morning Joe, March of last year, 19 months ago. Now he's comparing his IQ with that of his Secretary of State, Rex Tillerson. Joining us now from the White House, NBC News national correspondent, Peter Alexander. Peter, good morning. Help us sort this one out. Hey, Willie, good morning to you. Well, as long as he likes speaking to himself, he probably doesn't need to bring over lunch guests to the White House. A conversation with himself might be sufficient. But it turns out that today he is inviting the Secretary of State Rex Tillerson and the Defense Secretary James Mattis for what should be an interesting lunch, especially given the latest counterpunch from the president, a jab at Tillerson. This is in the just released edition of Forbes magazine entitled Inside Trump's head responding really for the first time to NBC News' exclusive reporting that uh, Tillerson privately described Trump as a moron this past summer. Here's the quote. President Trump says, I think it's fake news, but if he did that, I guess we'll have to compare IQ tests and I can tell you who is going mm. to win. He goes on in the course of this interview to talk about some of the opposing views the two men had. I was up on the South Lawn when the president was leaving town. You remember he said, it, we, we have our differences at times. I wish he would be a little bit tougher. But as for those opposing views, he says, ultimately, my view matters. That's the way life goes. In terms of one of the big sort of clash points between these two men, obviously, North Korea. You remember just a week ago, the president seemed to undercut his secretary of state after Tillerson, Tillerson talked about private diplomatic channels now existing between the U.S. and North Korea. The president basically said of Tillerson, stop wasting your time. Uh, the president's response to that, to Forbes, was, I'm not undermining. I think I'm actually strengthening authority. So those are just some of the best nuggets coming out of this new edition as we get a better sense, a better look inside the president's mind. I'm reminded as you pull out some of those old quotes back in December of 2015 when the president said he was highly educated. He says, I know the best words. Willie? So do you, Peter Alexander. So do you. Thank, thank you very much. By the way, coming up in our next wait, hour. Wait, the, Willie, oh, I, hold on. I just want to Willie, point out. Yes. We, need, we need to have Morning Joe t-shirts. So let's just, we're going to write down, and for the kids at home, we'll get that sort of Morning Joe, that 10, that circular 10 thing they yeah. made up for us. Looks real pretty like when you get it on a t-shirt. We need to have these Trump quotes. Um, I'm speaking with myself. That would be a great t-shirt, first in the series. The second one would be, uh, I have a very good brain. That, wouldn't, that be, wouldn't that make you the envy of all the kids on the Upper West Side? And then that last one, I, I say some of the best. What was it? I say some of the best the words. Best, what was that the best words. He has the best words. He has the best words. the NBC that... Experience Store downstairs. It'll be a hit. Let, yeah. uh, next hour, the author of what? that Forbes article where the president was quoted talking about his IQ and that it was better than Tillerson's will join us right here on Morning Joe. Yeah. Uh, Richard, what's the, um, the, the IQ test and the jokes aside, the implications of having a president and a secretary of state at odds this way? This is probably the low point of American diplomacy. You got a president who doesn't respect the Secretary of State. You got a president who disparages diplomacy. And you got a Secretary of State who's cutting back the ability of the State Department to carry out diplomacy. We got an empty State Department. Most of our embassies don't have ambassadors. And here we are at a time we're facing a North Korean threat and an Iran threat. We've got so Russians still sitting in Ukraine. We got Venezuela unraveling, on and on and on. And what we are basically doing is unilaterally disarming when it comes to using d diplomacy, which is one of our basic tools. You know, we could, it, you know, I understand why we're laughing. This is unbelievably irresponsible. We are denying ourselves an essential tool of America's involvement in the world. Elise Jordan is joining us at the table as well. Um, Elise, 
Is it true that we've surrendered diplomacy, or is it that Rex Tillerson is attempting diplomacy and others are attempting diplomacy, and it's being undermined by the president? Well, I think that at the very top level, Rex Tillerson is attempting to pursue diplomacy, but he's being undercut by the president constantly. But to Richard's point, he Tillerson has essentially dismantled the State Department as it has existed in modern American history. And so you look at you know countries where the embassies in the country, there's not an ambassador. And so local dip, local authorities aren't going and using the resources of the embassy. We aren't building those relationships. We have you know nothing at the country level. That goes back to, you look at the State Department, just the assistant secretary positions that are open. Right. No, and no, it's an, so what's it's, an amazing, happening. it's an amazing thing where you don't have specialists right now in the State Department and permanent positions on issues like North Korea and Europe uh, issues, a whole bunch of Middle East slots. Uh, and, and so there's no advice being, uh, being uh, filtered up to the White House, but of course in the White House, coming back to this, and it's not a joke, it's serious, these quotes, although they would make great t-shirts, uh, you have a president who doesn't want the advice of experts because he doesn't like experts. So you have a perfect system, a guy who won't listen to people who aren't there. There's a moment in the Brexit debate where one of the members of Theresa May's cabinet basically said, we don't need experts anymore. We've had it with expertise. We now have the American equivalent of the Brexit debate. And that's what Jared Kushner has said. He said he doesn't need reading. He doesn't need to be schooled by experts on Middle East peace. Right, he, he said there's no, no reason to, to read exactly any books doesn't need anymore to read about the exactly. Middle East. As authors just, of books can... about the Middle East, we take personal offense, <laughs> now, by it's the way. Personal. <laughs> yeah, now, now it's personal. Right? Coming up next, the ranking member of the Oversight Committee, Congressman Elijah Cummings, joins our conversation. Morning Joe's coming right back.